those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Including pastors. If they spare the rod of discipline, it's a sign that they hate their members. Do you get what I'm trying to say? If a pastor doesn't tell you the truth, it means he hates you, he doesn't love you. The measure of truth communicated to you by your pastor shows the level, the, the level of love he has for you. That's why I've told the protocols, none of them should come and stand here. They should all be seated. Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. And those who love their children care enough to discipline them. Those who love their children. So if I don't discipline, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the sure signs that I don't love you. Get the scripture and let it be. And if it goes, I just stop the choir and I will start a new one myself. Yes, I'm not joking. You may think I'm lying. You know, one day, um, it was not one day, I was talking to somebody and the person said, He or she has heard a comment about our church that when you joke, we remove you from the page, church page. And I said it is true. It is never a lie. And I also asked the person a simple question. Now, if you are employed in an organization like Coca-Cola, uh, Farm Milk or wherever, and if they give you instructions to go by, if you break it, what do they do? I'm asking a simple question. Don't pretend as if you don't know. Where you are working, if you break the rule, what do they do? What are the rules governing your work? Please give me a microphone. I'm trying to review to you how we don't respect God. I slept at five. Five. So, um, the first thing is, we give what, before you got employed, did you know about it? No. So when you were employed, what were the things they told you? Um, my boss told me that if... Your what? My boss. So you realize that she didn't even mention the boss name. She said, my boss. My boss. Are you worshipping your boss? No. Why are you calling him your boss? Because he's my boss. But you see, a foolish person will say, why do you call him your pastor? But there's nothing wrong with her calling my boss. I'm trying to let you think. Most of us, we are allowed social media people to. The preacher will come. I'm just exhorting us for five minutes. It looks like some of us, no matter what, we still repeat certain mistakes. And if care is not taking it, it will affect your personal life. Because every attitude, if Senyamimpona wounds Rona. Yes, your, your boss. Uh -huh. So the first time we give you a verbal warning. A verbal, no, when you when he, he employed you. Yes. Uh -huh. um, so he said that there are certain mistakes that they don't condone. There are certain mistakes that you do immediately. Your contract is terminated. Wow. Immediately. Yes. I mean, no amount of prayer can change it. No. If they just they just take it off without even thinking about whether you eat or not. Yes. Are we learning something here? Please let them know before when you also join them. They say, well, yes, I was already deleting before. Why you be deleting? That's why I've removed it. So I'm trying to let him understand. Attitude. You see, sorry does not mean anything to me from now on. It is change of attitude. I saw the time you came. I've been calling you since yesterday. Yes. And then if uh, the mistake is not serious, we give you verbal warning. The second so time. So when you commit pray, a certain mistake, they, they can terminate your contract instantly. Yes. But I mean, you're a Canadian. You were not in, it was not intentional. I mean, at least, they, what, what are some of the things if in case you commit like a mistake you commit they, will, they can terminate you? Um, it, For I think, example. Okay, the most important one is in my field it has to do with clients and their advertisement. If you don't do it well then it's a mistake. They lose money then we can terminate your contract. But, I mean, you, it was not your fault in yeah. making the mistake. Yes, but that's the real. 
So you see, she's trying to explain, to make me to understand why they would have to terminate her contract. Even if it's not her fault, the rule is, so you see, the rule is what's making her discipline. If not for the rule, she would have behaved anyhow. But the reason why she's very careful about her work is because she knows that if she doesn't go, her contract will be what? So I explained to the person that human beings, especially Africans or blacks, eh, if you do not let them know the consequences of their behavior, they'll keep on fooling about. That's the nature of we blacks. Albert's mother is traveling. She gets to the airport. Her flight leave. Left her. Thomas is not the number. Her flight left. She paid. She paid. And her flight she paid for has left. Is she not supposed to shout and complain that get me another flight? She had to pay for another flight. What she paid for. Uh-huh. And so that's the most important thing. Or also, um, there are things you don't do continuously. Like what? <laughs> okay, so let's say you're on air. There are certain things you don't say. Or let's say you're a DJ and you're told to play songs in a certain way. And you don't really in a certain way. So that or, means if you don't follow instructions. Yes. Yes. You can be tempted. Your contact can be Yes. Or if you are even late. Uh, so we have two, people. two things. Lateness and disobedience to instru- instructions can lead to the termination of a contract. So what, how bad I am, how bad do I look like if I also terminate your contract on being on the latest speech? So it is, it is wisdom for a normal organization to apply this principle and those of us in church no matter how tired a man is on Monday they know they are supposed to wake up and go to work no matter how tired but you call somebody where are you I was asleep you were not asleep there was no emergency in your spirit that you have an assignment somewhere that's the truth A pastor friend of mine is traveling to he traveled, he just took up this dawn. Do you know when he went to Accra? Friday. And you see, you mentioned two things: lateness and what? Instructions. And many of us, the reason why we are refusing to listen to instructions, it reveals pride. That's all I'm telling you. What reveals pride in a man is instructions. Yeah, you may think you are humble until I instruct you. Because every man, every, from the media to the pastor, every one of us, we have a standard we are living by. Do you know that you have a standard you are living by? But the moment as a man, I appear in your life and I tell you to do something beyond your standard, you, you wouldn't want to condone what I'm telling you. Is that when you enter a car, you, you see yourself more higher than the meat. Don't you see that? Am I lying? You are looking at, you know, you over, 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 don't you see yourself more higher than the meat? So when he talks to you in a way, you will respond in a way as if you are a master. Who has ever done that before? Now only me now because I'm a Sandagan, but you know be Give me the scripture. <laughs> it is only in church that when you correct people, they'll get offended and they leave the church. It's only in church. For instance, if her, has your boss corrected you before? Yes. Have you left the work? No. Koi. Konare, I mean come. Do you know why she doesn't want to leave? When, even if she's corrected. Because she has a certain level of understanding. And you see, we feel like there are so many churches around. So, be free, I'm a choir. But I'm telling you, there are churches and there are churches. <laughs> I'm being honest to you. It's like, I watch it. They are watching and I watch it. And also some, uh, uh, some fat, some women can tell, and you see that when they make that statement, you are still standing there. Because they believe in their product. So some of the people wonder why I remove people from the bed. Because I know what I'm presenting to the people. I'm not begging. I know what I'm bringing to the table. You need what I'm bringing to the table. As much as I also need your services. Imagine me telling God you need me. When I gave my life to God, who is benefiting? But don't you think it looks like God is more benefiting more from me? No, I am rather benefiting from God because you are seated here because of the fact that you think God has anointed me. Would you look at the where, where, where did you where did you where do you live? 
So you took a car all the way from Ahima Kokobeng to here, all because I mean, what to make you travel all the way? There should be something. If I were to be any normal guy, do you think? Please work on the screen for me. I have to. Do you? If I were to be any normal guy, would you travel all if not for your boyfriend? Would you travel all the way from Ahima Kokobeng? It is insane. I'm being serious today. It's insane. But now I am benefiting from my work with God because now one of the benefits of my work with God is you traveling all the way to come here for service. So have you seen somebody's contract being terminated before? No, but um, I have seen someone being queried before. Queried? What is the meaning of being queried? Um, when we give you a query, it means that let's say we give you a query today. The next day you commit the same thing that's it so is it a bad thing for them to query people no why why so would it be a bad thing for me to apply the same thing to you no are you getting the wisdom here you're not even responding this girl was coming late when she saw me she started speeding now so do you know what it means? The fear, the, her fear for God is very low. She fears Pastor Charles more than God. So when she saw me, she speed up her steps. Forgetting that before I even saw her, God knew. So you see, it all boils down to our being established in God. Yesterday, a pastor friend came from the US and I had to go for his program. When I came, I've not been well for some time, but I have to stay up and pray till five. Five here. I returned from the program nine. He has not, I went to tell him to stay, ask him around four. And I came to review the you are you you gone. Those who spare the rod, this is what the whole thing I'm telling. You. And he said, I'm going to show you another scripture. And you get what I'm trying to say. The woman who holds the placard to say, Welcome. She came 20 30 minutes before and she's not going to welcome people. You no, know, we have already come. So, who are you welcoming? Is it spirits? No, don't feel bad because you are telling this God, open mega doors, and God is saying you have not even been able to do small, smaller things. Can I tell you the truth? I have worked with God for some time. And I realized that it is not big things that moves God. I'm telling you, for my little work with God, it is not big things. One of my sons was telling me that he went out with his beloved on this uh, Christmas festival. And then he was telling me that he was planning something big for the girlfriend. And her, his sister told him, don't buy this, buy this for the girl. And he thought it would not move the girl because it's nothing. Until he bought it and showed it to the girl. And it was like, he has bought a Lamborghini for the girl. So what he was actually thinking will move, the girl did not move. It was another girl that revealed what. So that's, it is the Holy Spirit that reveals what moves God. And that's also that when we preach, it looks like what we tell is too simple for you to be. Because the one to lead prayer came and came with speed coming with the microphone, so she was leading out of pressure. And I don't know why Junior led him, allowed him to lead. What, how we begin the service will determine how it flows. The value of respect we give to the Holy Spirit in the beginning can determine somebody's life. I'm teaching you something in the supernatural. This is how people's lives get distorted. A doctor is performing a surgery and he turns and says, give, give me a small thing and the next mistake is it as a big thing. Yes, that's the mistakes people commit. One little mistake can lead to something big. Then the doctor goes, oh, I don't know if you are into medical field here. Then the doctor takes it, cuts something he's not supposed to cut, all because of the negligence of the one who had something wrong instead of hearing something right. Read it, one to go. Those who spare the rod of what? Can I say this? I'm saying it again. If we're in this church, and if I see it and I don't say it, I don't love you. 
It is not about the place being filled with people that will make me a pastor. What makes me a man of God is when I tell you the mind of God. It's not the numbers of people. What makes me a man of God to you is when I hear from God and I tell you that this is what God is saying. Those who spare the rod of discipline, of what? Do you know what a rod is? Do you know what a rod is? That means if I'm, I'm meant to get up, if I'm meant to shape her and I'm not shaping her, to God, I hate her. But to another person, why are you beating her? So me telling the protocol people they should never come. Do you? Oh, Apostle, you're so tall. That's, you see, that's a wicked person talking. You're a wicked person when you think that way. When I say the choir says should not sing, I know what I am applying the, the scripture, the rod of discipline. Because I love them and because I don't want God to be angry with them. This attitude can cause God to be angry with them. Yet none of us here, no matter how tired we are, when we are catching our flight, we are there before time. Most of you, when you're doing your national service, you were always on time. No matter how tired you are on Sunday, so they terminate their contract. So have you not understood why I also terminate people's contract on the made the military manaka one attitude until I see change. It's not begging. My toilet, maybe I, my data was on. Data, data, to me with the message. Which which one message? I say I, I, I was online, but I, I was not on. He said, I brought your phone. Who sent the message? To me with the red, but not online. Why am I addressing it publicly? So that we can all learn. Give me the verse 20. One, yesterday, I posted on my status and I said, be intentional about praying for wisdom. And the lady sent me a message. She said to me, do you pray for wisdom or seek wisdom? And if both, then what is the difference? And he said, do you pray that God should give you wisdom or he gives? Or you search for wisdom as in reading the Bible? If you know the value of something, that's, you see, how you pursue something will determine your value for it. Did you get what I said? How you pursue something determines your value for it. Now, for instance, if I say I love this girl and I don't call, I don't call it, do I really love it? I must prove it by the things I do. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Now, I'm teaching you one major way to have wisdom. He said, I'm giving you the answer I'm supposed to give to her. One, the person, the person won't answer. Get all there. And when I read this part, it really moved me. Get all. That means when you wake up and try your best to get an advice as much as you can. Advice about marriage, advice about relationship, advice about money. Get all, say all. all. Please, what I'm telling you, I'm just going to end. Get all the advice you can. That means that anything that dies, anything that fails in the hands of any man, God is not to be blamed. God is not to be blamed. If your marriage, I will not even use you because I'm very careful with what I say. Not in there. If a pastor can speak and then gadgets can respond, is it? If I start saying it. So when I use you as a bad example, come to me for you to pray for you. It will happen. The anointing doesn't know like a oh, bad example, a good example. So for instance, I go to a Japan. One different I go to Japan. Okay, I go to a Bantua. So now look at this. I go to a Bantua is married. She's a Christian. Then her marriage fails, and she comes to blame God. And meanwhile, God has already spoken ahead of time. Please follow. Get all the advice and you can about your life, about business, about church. Get all the advice you can about your life, about everything. Hey, maybe so. Maybe so. He said, What I said to my main church that we didn't say for make I'm, life is not easy. That's what I think. At a stage in life, eh, a lady sent me a message. She used to be on campus. She just completed last year. And she sent me a message that really touched me, but later on, it really hurt me. 
She said, I thought you were disturbing me and I thought you were making noise. But when I completed this, I realized that you were helping me. And I, I'm, 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 I don't know what to do with my life now. And I said, listen to the podcast. Get all the advice. If you get somebody advising you, please keep them with both of your hands. Don't never think they are making noise to you. At a point in your life, you will need somebody to advise you on how to go about marriage. Now, when you are young, you feel like you are on top of the world. In your relationship, you don't want to tell anybody. In your finances, you don't want anybody to know. But anything you are hiding today will become a mountain for you tomorrow. Anything you are hiding today. Get all the advice. Get all the advice. The advice on marriage, the advice on education. When you see you have a pastor, he doesn't know anything about you. You are, you are taking your own distraction. Yesterday, I was giving one of my sons an advice regarding his relationship. That if you are if you realize that you're not sure of her and she's not even sure of you, delete her number, tell her that tell her this is where I'm going, and this is where I don't want to waste my time. Are you interested or not? That's relationship wisdom. Don't waste your time. I told him, don't waste your time. Let her know your intentions. If she's not interested, let her know that. Okay, God bless you. And it is never a wrong thing to let express your intentions to a girl and she says no. It doesn't mean you were weakling, it means you were even bold. I gave him the advice yesterday. I was talking to three guys and I was advising them about relationship. The thing is about all about breast. Until you see breast in the bathhouse and you run away. Get all the advice and instruction you can. So you will be. So you will be. So there is a place where God can give you wisdom. And there is a place where God can instruct you. So anytime a man prays for wisdom, there are two things God does. Or let me say four. But let me give it to you. Number one, God can supernaturally impart wisdom in you. Like Solomon, you sleep and wake up and you are wise. Number two, God will lead you to a man whom he has filled with wisdom. So he may not need to give you what he has given to another man. All he does is to direct you. Do you get what I said? Get all the advice and instructions you can. From where? From the books people have written. From the messages people have preached. I was listening to a message of a man who has succeeded in marriage for 50 years. 50 years. A white man. Mildred and Kings, the Goku were interviewing him. I wanted to know how he was able to survive marriage 50 years. And the man said something. And that really shocked me. The first year, second year of marriage, there, there are so many shocks in marriage. And it happens everywhere. Do you know? But I know because I decided to get you decided to watch the novella. So you become wise by being intentional about going for advice and instruction. You must be intentional. Intentional look at your pastor and say, please, is there anything about my life you want you want? Or maybe this is the area of my life I want us to talk about. This is how we become wise. When you listen to the advice your pastor gives you, you become more wiser. When you listen to the instruction your pastor gives you, you are on your way to become wise. But the moment you ignore the advice and the instruction, now look at this, get all the advice and instruction, so you will be wise and the rest of your life. So that means that if there is nobody advising you and if there is nobody instructing, the rest of your life will be hell. 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 If there is nobody advising this young man about his purity life, about his finances, do you know that many people are living in regret now because the reason they know what they, they should have known? Many marriages are collapsing because many people shouldn't have divorced. But the reason why they divorce is because they don't know what they should have known. So when the Bible says, get all the advice and instruction, do you know that our the most difficult thing about we human beings is listening to instruction. Being, being told to do something and doing it. It's not just being told. Being told to come at 8, we come at 8.30. So you become more wiser by applying two things. Getting advice and getting instruction. And obeying it. You don't become a wise woman. No woman wants to marry a foolish man. And no man wants to marry a foolish woman. So how can both of them become what they don't want to be? Or what they don't want to marry? When both of them decide to go for an advice. And number two, instructions. So whilst the guy is busy getting an advice, 
and obeying an instruction. And whilst the ladies, when you meet her, you have solved 90% of your problem in life. Oh yeah. Advice about money. Do you know that as all of you here, you are rich as young as you are. No, no, it's not being here, no. I'm telling you the wisdom of God. The best place to be rich is when you are young. Because you have nothing to pay for. All you receive is to save. And because they give you money, yet at the end of the day, they cook for you. But you see, if you don't get somebody at that stage of your life to tell you where to go and how to do things, like Peter said to Jesus, Luke chapter 5, verse 5. Jesus got there. Now look at this. Peter had been fishing all night, caught nothing. Then God sends him a man he has filled with advice and instruction. Then Luke chapter 5, Jesus says, Master, Simon replied, we went hard all and didn't. So that means I have entered different kinds of relationships, yet none of them is working. I've done different jobs, but I can't save money. I've gone to different jobs, but my spirituality is dying. We have worked all night and didn't catch a thing. So there are people who have lived 30 years. Listen to me. I respect those who have grown. But if you have no resource of your growth, I don't respect you. I respect the fact that you are 90 years. But 90 years without evidence of your existence. Huh. The only thing I will learn from you is what made you waste the time I have now. Do you get it? So I will not have a problem with someone who has divorced. But when I get closer to the person, I would want to know what made the person divorce. I will not criticize you so that I will also for no, I don't criticize people. I intentionally listen. What is not working? What didn't work? Do you know I don't like ladies who don't know how to say please? I don't like it. I don't like it. Like they don't know how to say please. Why shouldn't you know how to say please? When Abigail will say to David, my Lord. Now tell a girl to say my Lord. That's what you mean. That was what brought. It's like I'm... what gave what gave what made David fall in love with Abigail was how she welcomed David. Many ladies are foolish in welcoming men. Because they think that every man wants to sleep with them. Men are moved by respect. Not what you call bottles. Bottles are all by women to only be asked over. But there is something beyond about us that moves them. Master Simon replied, We went hard. Oh, they went what? But no resource. So you can pray hard, yet no resource. You can fast hard, no resource. But you see, God can command the resource you need when he, he commands a man with wisdom and advice and instruction. And look at this. Now, let me, let me end with this. But if you say, now look at this. Now, go out where it is deeper and let down your net. And Peter was telling him that, ah, I have already gone where you are telling me to go. But you see, humility is about to command the resource he didn't have. Is it not amazing that you've been coming to this church and I'm telling I am telling you that if you be, if you continually do this or do that and do that, you will not become wise all the rest of your life. Oh. That means when you give them, you give them to foolish boys and girls. So many of us are the results of our parents. That's why God will intentionally bring you to church and correct the results. That's what we go for remedials. So church is like a remedial where the Holy Ghost is the what? The extra teacher. Master Simon replied, we went hard all last night and didn't catch what? But if you say, I will do what? That's humility. Now let's see what his humility. Now you see, the answer, his life is about to change. But the change was connected to his humility. So some of us think that God is all powerful to change your life. Yes, God is all powerful to change your life. But the question is, why isn't your life changing? Because you have not changed the way you think. So, you see, God is never the problem. You are the problem. Because God has already made provision regarding what can bring you the change. For instance, God is the pharmacist. And you came to him, you told him about your problem, and he told you that, listen, you are sick with malaria, so these are the malaria drugs. Take two in the morning, 
Now he has given you what we want to make you well. Now it is left for you to do what? Take it and do what? So Peter's life is about to change. Now look at it. But if you say so, I will let the net down. Eh? This is where some of us our problem is. When your master speaks, the one with an advice and instruction speak, you are not willing to let down your net. Your net is your pride, your arrogance, what you think you know. Because you already told Jesus, I've already told all night. That means you are trying to let Jesus know that I'm a skillful fisherman. And you're not the one to tell me to go back again. Do you know where I'm coming from? Do you know why I stay for such a child? So you are telling me to come early. That was the excuse you could have given to Jesus. But Jesus said, this is not the right way. Do it this way. And the Bible said, I will, and he said, I will let down my net again. Now look at the verses. When he let down the net, what happened? And this time, it is when he let down the net again. This time around, there was a commanding resource. That's, that's it. Before God, I stand. Before God, I stand. I sat with Pastor Elvis. You see, I don't mean, I, I, this year, I think last two months, God told me, change his name from Papa Elvis to my prophet. I said it here. There is nothing he says. Me, he doesn't need to say, I see in the realms of the spirit. To me, God has filled him with the spirit that anything he says to me, God is talking to me. And that's how I have positioned myself. So I'm always receiving a word. This morning I received the word from him. And he, took, he said, Jesus never starts something without finishing. So our problem is this time. This time. And this time, they are not where. You see, this time they are. But don't, have, you, have you realized something here? They are. But the, in the beginning, one person was talking. But at the end, so one person's obedience led to the breakthrough of many others. So when you decide to obey and listen to instructions, you see, my brother said yesterday, we went somewhere, and he said, the way we suffer, we have vowed never to let our children suffer. So the man by back, a decision has already been made. So when I say listen to an instruction, you may think I'm making noise. I'm not making noise. I'm making sense to you and your children on board. When you listen to the advice and the instruction, all the days of your life, you will begin to enjoy the goodness of the Lord. But the moment you choose to listen, like you select what I tell you, no, I'm telling you, there is a certain, look at the miracle. And this time, it's not amazing that the same place they went, when Jesus told them, when another voice added. So they, they I know you are born, I know this, the attitude you were born, but another voice is telling you, change. When you let down your net, you will catch. Look at this time, their nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. The same people who could not catch a fish all night, all night, all night, they could not catch a fish. But a master appeared and within less than an hour, because the Bible says when he let it down, they caught. So, what brings speed and answer is not just prayer, it's your ability to hear and do what God is telling you through your man of God. Are you here? So, please. Give me the scripture again. Proverbs 20 verse 19. Eh? Oh, how? Me? As he told me. God told me this and he delivered me. But he said, spend more time with God. I thought that, I thought, I thought that was advice was a normal statement. Spend more time with God. I used to be everywhere. In every program. Then I went to pray and please, the man, the man of God said, Please, next year, we want to go to pray. See, I'm not, I'm not available. I am not available. My year is already planned. And yes, my said that people place demand on value, but value doesn't come at a goal, it comes at a cost. Those who pay price to add value will have profit for their life. Your problem is you don't pay the price. You want this quick. You want this quick. You want this quick. But they that wait, they, not all, not everybody can add value, but they. Get all the, then is get all the advice you need to get it before you marry. Don't marry and see surprises. Get all the advices. Get all, get all, get all the advice on business. Don't just, don't start the business before you get on the bike. Get it before. Get all the advice and instruct me. My greatest blessing is when Pastor Evans says, my son, do 
two days. He told me, cancel all your programs. Hey, this year, the way programs came to me, is I said, asked my mom, asked my mom buy it. And that was the season. He said, cancel. Get all that. So when I advise you, you don't take it. You are, you are, you see, and you will be wise the rest of your. So when you ignore advice and what? Instruction, you are becoming a what? All the. I didn't say it. You said it. The Bible said when you get advice and instruction, you become what? All the days. But when you ignore advice and what? You become what? Oh, so you see, you don't. You don't you see what I said before, no, Abba. So those who don't get advice on marriage before they marry, they become foolish all the days of their. So they make foolish decisions. This is the one. I, one of the things I pressed the Holy Ghost. I told him, deliver me next day from foolish decisions. I told him, deliver me. I'm a pastor of a people. A decision I make can distort their life. Deliver me. I surrender my life to you. Deliver me from foolish decisions. And I told God, I may I not be a foolish husband. Yeah, may my wife, I, may I tell God, that's how I pray. I became so real, real, real to God that I am a man and I can make foolish things. Lord, deliver me and make me wise. I said, I told God, make me a wise pastor, make me a wise husband. And then I saw the scripture. Then if you want me to make you a wise husband, then get all the advice. Get all. Don't get some. You see, don't choose some from pastor. I always say, decide to. Get all the advice and the instruction, and you shall be wise. Why? I am trying to get all the advice and the instruction I can, so that when I also marry, I can also enjoy my marriage. So if I advise the choir, work on your lateness, your attitude, and you don't get it, it means that you're going to walk in the opposite of this all the days of your life. <laughs>